His love penetrates me, new life did He give. Into my heart does my Savior now live. His love penetrates Hi everybody. Oh, it's so good to have you back on the channel of Kona Face Center. We're filming, recording today from Studio One, and I am so excited to talk about this teaching. This is a great teaching. So I want you to thumbs up me, and I want you to subscribe if you have not yet, So and hit that little bell, because you'll get notifications when I'm online, but it's usually every Tuesday. Depends on the holidays and all that, but I'm here once a week, and starting soon, the beginning of the year, we're going to be having our uh, interviews with some of the people that come to Kona Face Center. So I am so excited about this. If you live locally, I want to, oh, you, this would be afterwards because we film about a month ahead. Anyway, today is like December 3rd. It's Sandy's birthday. So if you're from Kona, that's good for you to know. And if you are from the Kona area and you do not have a home church, I want to invite you. Our church is wonderful and there's wonderful people here. You will be loved and accepted all walks of life. So if you would like to come up to us, we're in Captain Cook. We're right across from Napa in the L &L, where L&L &L is in that Captain Cook shopping center. God bless you and I'm going to start on the lesson today. And the lesson is titled, Blessed to be a blessing. And I'm going to start back in Genesis chapter 12, starting in verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. Verse 2, And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing. So Abraham's the first one that this was said to that you're going to go, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make you a blessing. And he's other translations say to all the nations, all the nations, not just Israel, but all the nations. Okay, so now I want to go back up to the previous chapter, the last verse. So it's actually the verse before. It's Genesis 11.31, and I'm right now reading from the New American Standard Bible. Okay, verse 31 says, Terah took Abram his son, so Terah was dad, and Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, and his son Abram's wife. So the daughter-in-law, because she was married to Abram. He was not Abraham at this time. He was still Abram. God had not changed his name. And they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans in order to enter the land of Canaan. And they went as far as Haran and settled there. Now this is kind of interesting because they were headed out to the land of Canaan. Now it doesn't say why Terah stopped here. It doesn't say if God told him to go out and to make it all the way to Canaan, but he didn't. He stopped in this place. And what happened was they lived there, and then Terah eventually died. So Terah dies, and then this is what happens in Genesis 12, 1 and 2. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make you and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. Now, Abram was to become Abraham, who was to become the man of God of faith, the father of our faith, all of us, Jew and Gentile, and he was to be the father of many nations, which we know, and that includes everybody on the earth. God's desire is for none to perish, but all come to the knowledge and truth of him. And his desire is that we have faith like Abraham. So let's go to Proverbs 19 and 17. Remember our title today is blessed to be a blessing, just like Abraham was blessed to be a blessing. This is God's plan. So we are gonna go to Proverbs 19 and 17. And that says, one who is gracious to a poor man lends 
to the Lord. I love this scripture. And he will repay him for his good deed. Now, I know when God repays me, it is a lot more than what I give. It's just amazing because we are blessed to be a blessing. And God gives seed to the sower. So once we sow, we get more seed. Part of that is bread, part of it is seed. So we plant part of it and we sow part of it. That's just how it works. Seed time and harvest all through the Bible. Let's go to Proverbs 22 and 9. He who is generous will be blessed, for he gives some of his food to the poor. There it is again. And the people of Kona Faith Center are the most generous people. We support so many missions groups all around the globe, even though we're not a huge church. And we have been, my husband and I, or at least I have been to 11 countries. Uh, he hasn't been to Africa yet. I did go there last year to Kenya. So we support missions from all over. We support missions, some missions organizations that give to more than one place. But we have relationship with the people that we give to. And it's kind of sad because some of the countries have cut us off. Like India, the government, as of the new prime minister, does not allow these donations to the churches because it's mostly a Hindu society. So they have had to, and it's good, rely completely on the Lord, but we supported them for the last 20 years. But God is good, and yes, we've been to India, and it's a very interesting place. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 28 and 27 is where we're going to go now. He who gives to the poor will not lack... But he who hides his eyes will have many curses. Oh my gosh, let's say give and be blessed, don't give and, and be cursed. I like the give part, not the curse part. How about you? Let's go to Proverbs 11:24. I do have a lot of scripture because these say exactly what I'm trying to get across to you today. Proverbs 11 and 24. There are those who generously, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, so this is going to amp out the scripture a little bit. There are those who generously scatter abroad, yet increase more. So again, as we give to people, even outside of our own community, which we do give to, we just had a fundraiser and we gave every penny to the local food bank because of COVID and more people are out of work and needing to get food from the food bank. But we do scatter abroad, like I was saying. So there are those who generously scatter abroad and yet increase more. There are those who withhold more than is fitting or what is justly due, but it results only in want. So here we go again to the blessing or the cursing. We want the blessing. We want to be blessed. And the way that we're blessed is not by hoarding. And I'm not telling people not to invest and not to have savings. And, you know, we don't want to live paycheck to paycheck because life happens. So we want to be able to do those things. But I am telling you that the best investment we make is giving to others, is giving to the poor, is taking care of need that is beyond ours. And I can remember one time, this is a great testimony, it was when Jason and I were first married and we wanted to give, we made a commitment to give $200 to um, China Christian orphans. And this was so important to us and we didn't have that extra money. We were just newly married, I was in nursing school, he was working and not making that much money at the time and we had children to support. and. We prayed and asked the Lord for that $200. Within just a week or two, Jason's grandma sent us out of the blue, she had never done this before, a check for $200. Isn't that awesome? And God has done things like this throughout our life. So we know it is a blessing to give. It is a blessing to sow above and beyond our tithes and offerings even. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 15. I'm back in the New American Standard, and I'm going to read two chapters, chapter seven and cha uh, chapter 15, verse 7 and verse 8. Okay, starting in 7. If there is a poor man with you, one of your brothers, if in any of your towns, 
in your land, which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart, nor close your hand from your poor brother. This is how we are to be. Verse 8, but you shall freely open your hand to him and shall generously lend him sufficient for his need in whatever he lacks. Not just, you know, for some of it, but whatever. If you've got it, you're to give it. Don't look at me. Go to the verse in Deuteronomy. This is the Lord's word. This isn't my word. Okay, let's go a little further down in that chapter. I'm still reading from the NASB. Verse 10. You shall generously give to him, and your heart shall not be grieved when you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all your undertakings. We cannot outgive God. God owns everything. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and that's just, he owns it all, really. And he has created it for us. But when we are generous, when we are a blessing, we are blessed. So we are blessed to be a blessing. Not blessed just to be filthy rich and rolling in it. And there's nothing wrong with people that are rich if they give generously. Big difference from people who hoard it and have evilness in their heart versus people who give it and have love and generosity in their heart. So let's look at verse 11. For the poor will never cease to be in the land. Therefore I command you, saying, you shall freely open your hand to your brother, to your needy, and poor in your land. So we've read about giving outside of our land and giving within our land. So this is both community and this is giving outside to other communities that God puts us in touch with. And God has put us in touch with a lot of people all over the globe because he knows that we have a generous heart as a church, as a ministry. But for a ministry to have a generous heart, the people in the ministry have to have a generous heart. Psalm 41 and 1, and this is from the New King James Version. Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. So this goes on, people, beyond just getting money back, getting seed back, harvesting a big harvest. This goes into protection from trouble. And I have to tell you, there has not been one person in our church or families that have gotten COVID since this whole thing started, and we are at December 3rd. So you know how long that's been. And yes, there have been cases on the island. They stopped travel here. They did all kinds of things to try and stop it. And we have church. We have full people in our church because it is our Constitution right to do so. And that just went again to the Supreme Court. And I am so thankful for the outcome of that because it came favorably to not interfere with our religion. And God is so good. Okay, so that was Psalm 41, 1. Blessed is he who considers the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Let's go to Matthew now. We're going to go to the New Testament. Matthew 10 and 42. I'm back in the New American Standard. And whoever in the name of a disciple gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water to drink, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. We're to take care of the keiki, which means children in Hawaiian. We're to take care of the children that are around us, that are amongst us. Do you know I went and fought with the junior high school because I was finding out that if the parents didn't pay the bill, the children couldn't eat lunch? It broke my heart, and they didn't want me to give money from the church. The woman's ministry wanted to do that for kids that were without lunch. And they didn't want me to do it at the school because of the red tape. That's not right. But God, because of COVID, the children now get free lunch. So praise God. God will work it out. If we have a heart to give, he will find a way. And not only that, but he's giving every week. We have somebody in our church that is involved in a program that gives frozen dinners, five frozen dinners to families in need. So it just works out great. God is so, so faithful. Let's go to Luke chapter 14, 
verses 13 and 14, and I'm back into the New King James Version. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you shall be paid at the resurrection of the just. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm trying to store up my rewards, my blessings, everything in the heavenly vault and I would rather have it for all eternity than the few years we are here on this earth. So I want to encourage you to be a blessing because God blesses you. And don't just invite, we invite everybody and anybody to the church. It doesn't matter if they have nothing. We've had people that, are, that live on the street that we want to come so they could learn about being a blessing as we bless them. And we've had people with much, much finances. Doesn't matter. And the in-between, which most of us are. Most of us work and earn a living so that we can be a blessing. It's good to work, people. Don't stay home just because of COVID. Find a job. Get out there and work. Don't stay home just because you get a little more unemployment. It is healthy to work. It is healthy for your children to see you working. Now, I'm not talking against mom staying at home. Sometimes that's our work when our children are little. But men, get out there and work. Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified if you're taking notes. Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. So we're blessed to be a blessing. God gives seed to the sower, but he gives us the seed first so we can sow it. He's just so good. We're still in the Amplified. I'm reading from Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Give, and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will they pour out into the pouch of formed by the bosom of your robe used as a bag. I like the Amplified sometimes because it helps us really understand. For with the measure you deal out, with the measure you use when you confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to end with two scriptures from Matthew 25. They're a little bit longer, and I've actually reversed the verses because I want to end on a positive note. I want to end with you encouraged, not discouraged. So let's turn to Matthew 25, and we're going to start in verse 41, and we're going to read through to verse 46. And I believe I am back in the New American Standard. I didn't write it down, so who knows? You'll have to look it up. Starting in verse 41 of Matthew 25. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and the angels. And the angels are the fallen angels, so we call them demons. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me sick and in prison, and you did not visit me, then they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did you see, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he, being Jesus, will answer them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to the least of these, to the one of the least of these, it actually says, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. If we don't take care of others, Jesus is saying we're not taking care of him. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Whoa, let's read the good news and end on that note. We're still in Matthew 25, but we're going to go up to verse 34 and read down to verse 40. But it's important to know what verse 41 and 46 says, so it's important to read the whole chapter so you get the full picture of what God is saying. Okay, here we go, Matthew 25 and verse 34. 
Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from you from the foundation of the world. Yes, Jesus knows who is going to give and who's not going to give, who's going to be generous and who's going to be stingy. He knows from the foundation of the world, and he's always been. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them. You did it to me. We are blessed to be a blessing. And I want to encourage each and every one of you, if you've had a stingy heart, you have an opportunity to turn away from that stingy heart and turn to God, run to God. He is so generous. He gives us love, his mercy. He gifts us continuously. So turn to God, ask him for forgiveness, and begin your adventure. Start with tithes and offerings, and then begin your adventure giving to the missions in your church and giving outside. Father, I thank you for the people that are watching. Bless them. Help them to be mighty in their generosity so that they receive a mighty return. In Jesus' name, amen. And I will see you next week. God bless you. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your Spirit could this have been done.